Welcome to Endotales from Life. In this video, we are going to discuss about calcium hydroxide as an intracanal medicament in endodontics. What is the clinical technique and what is the type of calcium hydroxide that we need to use? I especially wanted to make this video when I was treating a case where there was an intracanal calcium hydroxide dressing that was given by another dentist and the difficulties that I faced. So I wanted to make it clear uh, about the selection of the calcium hydroxide for intracanal medication and also when exactly it is indicated. So if we have the habit of placing calcium hydroxide for every case that you do multiple visit or every case that you think is having a necrotic canal, we need to know the literature that have been published in the past. So there are some systematic reviews and also this is a paragraph from the Cohen's textbook of endodontics, the latest edition. So you can see here that when a calcium hydroxide is once placed in the root canal, it can never be completely removed. And in spite of EDTA, sodium hypochlorite or ultrasonic, there can still be up to 20 to 45 percent of calcium hydroxide that is always left behind. And what can this residual calcium hydroxide do? It can interfere with the setting of few sealers and it can also interfere with the seal that is achieved with the sealer and the final obturation that we are going to give. And mainly calcium hydroxide is used for antibacterial efficacy but studies have clearly proved that and calcium hydroxide is not effective especially against bacteria that are supposed to cause root canal failure. And the efficacy of calcium hydroxide is again questionable because it has been shown that the dentin can buffer and inactivate the bacterial activity of calcium hydroxide. And also some studies have found that the bacterial count has actually increased after the placement of calcium hydroxide. So the conclusion from various studies uh, is that calcium hydroxide has a very limited effectiveness in eliminating bacteria. So if you are thinking that placement of calcium hydroxide is going to give you a nice uh, bacteria free canal, no, you need to change your mind. So the intracanal medication, the need for intracanal medication is not primarily for antibacterial efficacy. So we have different modes of cleaning and shaping with uh, the combined with rotary, dynamic irrigation, with the use of sonics, ultrasonics. And also we know that the recent sealers, the vasoramic sealers by themselves have a very pronounced antibacterial activity than that of calcium hydroxide. So where exactly is calcium hydroxide now recommended? Does it have a role at all in endodontics? Yes, in very few situations, especially in multiple visit root canal treatment, but again not for root canal disinfection alone, but when in cases where you have a questionable prognosis, wherein uh, you want to know the outcome of your treatment during follow-up or observation. So that is when you can use calcium hydroxide maybe as an interim dressing during the observation period. So what type of calcium hydroxide do you need to use? So you need to know that calcium hydroxide can be broadly classified into two types. One based on the setting. You also have a calcium hydroxide that can set, whereas you also have non-setting calcium hydroxide. So calcium hydroxide that can set is basically used for pulp capping as a sub base but whereas for intracanal medication you need a calcium hydroxide that does not sit in the root canal so the calcium hydroxide that we are going to discuss today is non-setting calcium hydroxide and again based on the vehicle used it can be classified into aqueous and oil based these are the two most commonly available commercial types so what we need to know is we should not use oil based calcium hydroxide because the oil based vehicle basically uh, makes it very difficult for us to remove the calcium hydroxide from the root canal once it is placed and can never be completely removed and it can obstruct the seal that can be obtained with the help of obturation and can impair the properties of the sealer. 
So what we need to use in root canal for intracanal medication is aqueous calcium hydroxide. So first let us talk about what calcium hydroxide that should not be used. And that one particular product that is very famous in this part of the world is the Metapex, which is an oil based iodoform containing silicon oil containing calcium hydroxide. So this is primarily used by periodontists for primary teeth uh, obturation and also has been recommended in periodontics for a very long period of uh, interim obturations like uh, follow up for an owl's teeth etc where you want to know the long term prognosis or when calcium hydroxide based apexification was once famous before the advent of bioceramics this type of material was famous but this material I repeat should not be used for routine intracanal medica medication so uh, this is this was the case that I was talking about this patient had initiated his treatment elsewhere and reported to me for the completion and according to the patient he told me that there was a huge lesion and he brought the case sheet and it was clearly mentioned that metapex was used as an intracanal medicament so once metapex i was talking about calcium hydroxide even an aqueous based calcium hydroxide it's not possible to remove it completely and when you place these oil based calcium hydroxide removal is very tough you will see in this video so uh, apart from gaining patency here you can see i am using ultrasonics along with sodium hypochlorite for the removal of the calcium hydroxide and it's still very tough and since there are some studies which have claimed that EDTA can be very efficient uh, in removing leftover calcium hydroxide here I am trying EDTA with uh, sonic irrigation especially air sonics and in spite of that you can see the amount of metapex or the silicon based calcium or silicon oil based calcium hydroxide that has been left behind so uh, the maximum that I can do now is I have to leave behind that and still proceed with the obturation. So this is my final obturation that I have done with the bioceramic. You can clearly see that the calcium hydroxide that is left behind is going to impair the contact between the bioceramic sealer and the root dentin. So uh, I really recommend you to not use an oil based calcium hydroxide for the purpose of intracanal medication so if at all you decide to give an intracanal medicament what you need to choose is an aqueous calcium hydroxide so it's basically a water based vehicle which can be easily removed from the root canal also that uh, the metapex has an oil based vehicle which all these uh, uh, oil based calcium hydroxide do not have a high release of hydroxyl ions so basically for intracanal medication we want a peak in the hydroxyl ion release so that is specially achieved with aqueous calcium hydroxide so what you can do is yes this powder based calcium hydroxide is still a very good choice you can use this powder which can be mixed with distilled water or saline or even some studies recommend it to be used with a diluted sodium hypochlorite to form a nice creamy paste. This nice creamy paste can be carried to the root canal with the help of a lentil or spiral. Or another easy way is to have this ready made injectable aqueous calcium hydroxide. So you need to make sure it's an aqueous based or water based. You can see in this product, it's clearly mentioned that it is a water based calcium hydroxide. But some there are different brands that have this calcium hydroxide. So you can choose from any one of them. But what you need to know is this type of tip that is too thick and short may not be sufficient for us to place calcium hydroxide. So when we place calcium hydroxide, always you need to remember just a thin coating or coating or filling the calcium hydroxide just to half the length of the root canal is not sufficient. We need to fill the entire space, root radicular space with the calcium hydroxide so we need to have an ideal tip for placing the medicament in the root canal so this tip is too thick so though some of uh, the economical 
calcium hydroxide comes only with the tip that you see on the left. What I do is I take the tip that comes along with my bioceramic sealant or the metapex tips can also be used for this purpose. So these also come with the stopper. So you can see this to the calcium hydroxide tube. I just attach this plastic cannulas and it's very important for you to know your working length and also have a stopper. So we expel the calcium hydroxide right till the tip of the cannula before placing into the canal. Then it is placed 1 to 2 millimeter short of the working length and you need to be passive while injecting. So magnification is highly recommended when you use this technique. So you can see as I am injecting I am also withdrawing the syringe which is very important. When you don't withdraw the syringe that is when calcium hydroxide is going to overfill. And you can see here calcium hydroxide has been evenly coated uh, and it's been completely filled along the entire length of the canal. And you can see this, this is aqueous calcium hydroxide. This can be easily removed compared to that of oil-based calcium hydroxide. So according to studies, uh, even this aqueous-based calcium hydroxide, some amount is always left behind. It's impossible to remove, but here I'm using just ultrasonic with a very diluted sodium hypochlorite and you can see that in few seconds or a minute we are able to almost remove the majority of the calcium hydroxide. So this is a case, uh, an example where I would say it's a classic indication for a calcium hydroxide because this patient reported with a lesion and also a sinus tract and a swelling and I was particularly not sure about the prognosis because there was slight mobility and there was also a lateral lesion on the mesial side of the root, almost near the cervical region as you can see here. So uh, I, was, I placed aqueous calcium hydroxide, the same technique that I showed in the video. The entire canal was filled and the patient was observed for two weeks and once the sinus tract disappeared and I was able to uh, assess the outcome of the endodontic treatment then I removed the, all the calcium hydroxide with the help of ultrasonic and uh, diluted uh, sodium hypochlorite and following this a bioceramic obturation technique was done you can see a lateral canal uh, towards the cervical area towards the lesion especially and this is how we use calcium hydroxide not for every case and whenever I need to place or use a calcium hydroxide, we only use an aqueous calcium hydroxide. Make sure it's used with the proper technique and the entire canal is filled. And we also need to make sure they are completely removed. So what is one common myth? Again, I wanted to talk about calcium hydroxide is that people think calcium hydroxide is very biocompatible. And when there is lesion, some even believe calcium hydroxide has to be intentionally pushed beyond the apex. So this is not acceptable. No material should be placed beyond the uh, root canal. This is completely not allowed. Extrusion of any material, be it bioceramic or calcium hydroxide, is not advocated in the literature at all. And you can see here there are some case reports and studies that calcium hydroxide, if it's going to extrude, especially near uh, structures that are in the periphical region that are very sensitive, we are going to face some serious complications. So calcium hydroxide should never be placed beyond the apex. It is a myth. If you think that calcium hydroxide pushed beyond the apex can favor periapical healing. So what is the take home message here? Think twice before placing calcium hydroxide because once placed can never be removed. So it is actually not needed for every case for root canal disinfection. So calcium hydroxide can be restricted to cases where you're going to do multiple visits, where you want to assess the treatment outcome in cases where you have a questionable prognosis. And when you're using calcium hydroxide, you should always use an aqueous non-setting calcium hydroxide and the entire canal has to be filled either with lent low spirals or with that easy to place premixed injectable form. And never use oil-based calcium hydroxide, especially for people in India. Do not use this, prop, this product which is very famous called Metapex for routine root canal intracanal medication. Thank you. I hope this video was of great help to you. For more educational content, 
please follow me on my social media platforms and also to learn more of endodontics you are welcome to our endo 360 the comprehensive endodontic workshop